All right, hey guys. So we're gonna to talk today a little bit about phrasing. Um, I'm gonna to to work a little bit with the C blues and the uh, two five one and C. So it gives us some some ways to um, sculpt our lines over those guys and hopefully make for some more cohesive uh, improvisation as we go. So the first idea I want to talk about, I know it's um, kind of the backbone of uh, you know this is kind of doing scales, but um, I want to talk about the the grid or like a rhythmic grid when we are improvising that uh, we want to have control of before we can start putting in these, these syncopations and uh, all these, you know, you know, mixing them all up. But to get there, we do want to be able to execute either straight eighth notes, straight triplets, straight sixteenth notes, um, in whatever scale we're, we're choosing to work with. So, you know, scales can be um, kind of a, um, you know, it's obviously where we all start. But uh, I know they're a little little dry to practice. So let's try to do a couple things here to spice them up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna work on our eighth notes first. Let's just take our C7. And uh, let's start with just doing the basic mixolydian. Uh, but I wanna keep really careful track of, of the eighth notes that we're playing. So we're gonna be like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So always making sure we're gonna do basically two measures and then come, come back out on the one. So uh, again, um, going on the eighth notes, they're pretty basic here. We've all got this. It's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. All right, cool. So most of us can do that, but let's spice it up a little bit with uh, starting in different places on the scale, still being able to keep that nice steady rhythm. So what I'm gonna do here is move through the chord tones. We'll go up to the third, uh, same exercise or same rhythm, but uh, different notes. So one and two and three and four two and three and four and one cool what about the fifth same thing and i'm, I'm using basic skill fingering same one uh ready go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and then lastly let's do the seventh i'm gonna start this with my fourth finger one and two Kind of mess the one up a little bit, but I think we'll let that slide. All right, cool. So that's my first thing. Again, I know it's not that revolutionary, but just doing eighth notes, uh, but being able to control which uh, chord tone you're on, either the root, the third, the fifth, or the seventh, or whichever chord. You can do the same thing with F7, of course. All right, up to the third. So on and so forth. G7, you know, get all the, the blues chords in there. Um, is the idea. All right, now another thing. You know, uh, most of the time when you're improvising, you're, you're alternating, you know, uh, you can put some spice in there too, but um, the two main rhythms I would say are, are executed all the time are the eighth notes and the triplets. So we also want to be able to control when we're going into triplets and know how those are going to feel under our fingers as well. So we can do the same scale in triplets if we're going... So you'll notice how to add some there to kind of fill up the, the two bar phrase, but that's what you want to figure out when you're doing the thing, um, when you're improvising. And like, a, it's not always going to fit the scale. Um, you'll find it hanging off, so you got to find ways to kind of work your way back. But again, it's what you don't want to do is just go willy-nilly and lose track of the count. Like, mm, how many have I done? I don't know. Okay, whatever. That's not where we want to be. We want to be controlled. One, two, three. able to bring it out you know those those two two bars cool same tr same drill with that you can kind of take that around to the different chord tones if you do up the third a one two three four one two three four one two three four cool and then the last step to that i think would be um alternating between eighth notes and triplets because again that's that's mostly what we do there's other rhythms of course but those are those are your basic ones that you really want to have control over so you might do something like one bar of eighth notes one bar of triplets uh same kind of idea one uh one and two and three and four and one and two, three four one two three four let's try that again again i'm not worrying about the specific notes i'm hitting i'm just trying to stay inside the scale and uh, I'm mostly focused on the rhythms here. So let's try that again. I'm gonna start on the fifth. I'll do a bar of eighth notes, bar of triplets. One, two, ready, go. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Cool. 
And uh, again, just um, giving yourself those scripted rhythms. Um, I think as we advance to this next, um, you know, level of, of phrasing, uh, don't shy away from scripted rhythms because they, they will take some of the guesswork out of it and they will help you keep control of kind of what, what your timing is doing. All right, so that's the scale stuff. That's the, um, the building blocks here, but let's get into the more artistic side of it uh, where we're actually kind of playing a little bit. And uh, I'm gonna borrow from some other YouTubers here um, uh, if we can see that. So again, when I'm looking at any set of changes, whether it's the blues or anything else, this is basically how my head is, is thinking. I'm like, okay, I've got this far with the C7, four bars of the C7, and uh, how am I gonna fill up that space? I could do a four bar phrase, uh, two two-bar phrases, four one-bar phrases. <laughs> but the idea there is to um, make an idea that's going to cohesively fit inside that space. And, um, you know, even with the beginning piano books, you know, they, they describe a phrase as like a musical sentence. So it is kind of an abstract thing, but a sentence, you know, should have a clear beginning, um, a clear middle and a clear end. It should convey an idea. And it's interesting that they connect it with like a verbal sort of thing. So I think that one of the easiest ways to keep your phrases musical is to think of your hand or your, your melody as a, um, a vocal line, you know? So like if we're playing, I'm gonna get the blues going here. Um, all right, so that's, there's our C7, here comes the F, F bars, you know, we all know this, back to C, G7, oh, this is jazz blues, so they're getting a little fancy, but, having some fun there but again um, I'm trying to break this down into three statements basically and um, since it's the blues I, I am kind of trying to think of how, how it would go from a vocal perspective so I can take something two ideas here um, one is to you know we're gonna limit our rhythms and limit our note choices and that's surprisingly how we'll, we'll open up to like more more possibilities so I'm gonna take just the blues scale and I'm gonna take just these three notes out of it so, um, G, B flat, and C. Um, space, do a second phrase. Third phrase. All right, let's try that again. So again, that is really this, as simple as it gets. I think when it's, um, you know, when we're thinking of a bunch of notes, it's easy to get lost in, in, the, in just all the choices there. So um, you can really, two notes, three notes, you can make a lot happen just with that. Obviously, you'll get a little frustrated, um, you know, just sticking to that the whole time. But, um, you know, once, once you master those, add some other notes from the, the blue scales or switch your, your, which three notes you're thinking of. So you could, you could take that up to hear the second time, you know, maybe just kind of keep going up three notes of the blues scale would be a, a, a great way to do it. Let's, let's try that a little bit. I'll do one phrase here, uh, second phrase with these three, third phrase with this, so on and so forth. Just keep going up. Let's see what we get. Let's try this back over. Oh, try again. going to see what you come up with. Um, going up, got G, B flat. Going up here. Alright, 
so just note sets. Obviously, you can do four notes, five notes. You can do the Mixolydian scale. But um, again, try to think of simple ideas that that'll fit inside of the each four bar set, and then leave space in between them. All right. So the next thing I, I did want to cover. Let's let's think of it as like um like a vocal line, basically. So if it's a blues, you know, I'm listening to this. I'm thinking like. Babies left me, she took my dog to um, my baby left me. Oh, there's nothing I can do. Right, so I'm gonna take those lines. Again, they're silly if I just say them out, out loud, but if I try to turn them into the, into something musical here, you know, the lyrical content isn't important, it's, it's the rhythmic punch that we get. So that's what I'm gonna be thinking. Uh, let's see how that goes. I'm gonna try that with my um, note sets here, the same thing, three notes at a time. That's the idea. Let's open that up to the full Mixolydian scale. Same sort of thing. I'm going to be thinking of those same um, lyrics in my head and just uh, trying to put a uh, melody to them. to make it pop. Three notes. Cool, so that's one, one way to approach it. And then um, kind of tying the, the two together, um, let's go back to thinking, I guess, of, of kind of like a rhythmic count um, and op open it up a little bit. So let's, Try around, um, this time around I'm gonna do uh, an eighth note phrase, a triplet phrase, and then an eighth note phrase. So again, just trying to catch control over um, how those guys are gonna fit. Let's get to a good starting point. That's kind of the idea. Let's let's uh, let's switch those up a little bit by kind of adding some rest into the idea. So so far we've been doing one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Let's go one and two. And, excuse me. One and two and three and four and one two three and four and one. Um, so we're gonna leave two and three. One two three and four and one two. Okay, you'll get. I'll play it. You'll, you'll hear it. All right. So here comes that middle phrase. We'll go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Ah, missed it. Right, here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One, two, three, four. Here we go again. One and two and three and four and one and two. I'm messing up. All right, here we go. Again. Everything going. Space. 
Okay, so kind of some basic ideas, and then of course when we're going full bore here, um, it's a combination of all those things, but you want those foundations underneath, and um, you still want to know kind of where that where that count is. So, you know, I before you know walk before you run here, but um, let's try to mix them all together. So. Here comes the triplets. Some triplets. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three. Going back to the vocal thing. Now again, this double stop, so it kind of give you a a lot with those. Triple it, one, triple it, triple it, triple it. Eight notes. Cool. So again, uh, I don't know, uh, phrasing is so abstract it's hard to, to know if that's um, super helpful but hopefully just to kind of give you some ideas and some some ways to to kind of practice that stuff all right so let's move away from the blues a little bit go into kind of more jazzy territory with this 251 um is the other thing i wanted to talk about and all right so this one's a lot slower we got c major seven so same ideas this is four bars of this all right so I know I'm in C major. Um, I know the chords are D minor, G7, C major. The first thing I'm gonna do here is just try to land the third of each chord, and I'm, I'm just gonna hold it down for, for each spot. So I know for D minor, that's an F. For G7, that's a B. And then uh, E for C major seven. Uh, let's hear how that sounds. Back to D minor. Double it up. Here comes the end notes. And again, I'm just trying to get that grid going. Okay, cool. And again, uh, that's the grid, that's where you want to start, and then from there, being able to um, control which chord tone you're on and uh, move it around. So um, I'm running low on my recording time here, so I'm gonna um, go and jump to the, the fireworks here. Let's, <laughs> we'll do eighth notes and triplets, uh, kind of trying to give you some, some lines here, so. Same line. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Four, one, two, three. Then always hugging those chord tones. One more time around. Cool. 
So again, um, it's kind of an abstract thing. So I, I wish I had like a magic pill just to be like, oh, this is how you do it. But uh, it's it's trying to think like as melodically as possible, and uh, really try to think of your right hand as as a singer or a vocalist. Uh,